Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to do a cool mandala flower today with you guys. So I have like an odd shaped rock, but you can do this on any shaped rock as long as you can draw a circle. I've just used a compass for that, but you can uh, use a lid and draw around the lid. Um, I just want to start with a nice black circle because that's where we are going to put our mandala. Now I am, as you can see, I, I did already draw the pencil circle on there, but now I'm filling it in with black paint and we're just going to let that dry and then we'll go from there. But I am going to try to keep the center dot. Um, so I'm going to paint around the center dot so that I can keep my center and that will be the center of our mandala very, very soon. I'm being very careful to try and keep the shape circular still. Uh, the pencil was really hard to see on this stone. And keep in mind, my stone is going to be going even darker um, once, once I seal it. So it's going to change quite a bit once we're done. Now, I am trying to keep this rock in your view because I've had a few complaints about that. Um, I really struggle with, with doing all of this and... Uh, forgetting to keep the the painting in your view. So I'll apologize ahead of time in case it does happen again, but I have put some sparkly tape so that I can see it and appreciate it. Um, and then hopefully I'll keep my rock within those two lines of sparkly tape. And hopefully my camera doesn't move around too much either. So if you can hear my cats, um, they are talking to me while I'm working on my tutorial. My kids are over visiting grandma for just a little bit, just so that I can do a little bit of work tonight on Valentine's Day. I wanted to get something up for you guys on the weekend, and there will be another one up possibly by Monday. So good news for you guys. I'll have some stuff to keep you busy trying to keep on the theme of bright colors and spring as well because it is in the air people i can smell it between the minus 21 degree uh celsius that we had yesterday <laughs> uh it warmed up a little bit today though still below zero but it warmed up and i can appreciate that so if you live in ontario canada I live in northern Ontario, and it's chilly. It is chilly, and I am desperate for some spring, for some signs of spring. Um, I have a whole lot of snow that's going to have to melt before I'm going to see anything. Uh, so I'm creating spring today. <laughs> I'm going to use lots of bright colors. As you can see, this kind of looks like a sunflower. It is going to kind of resemble a sunflower, only it's going to be in magenta which is the color I'm using right now. And I'm also going to be using some fire coral. So we're going to be changing up our sunflower, giving it some bright, bold colors. This is not a realistic flower. This is a Rachel's Rocks flower. So please stand by for beauty. Now I've put one coat using a paintbrush just to kind of find where my uh, beautiful petals are going to be. Um, but now I'm using a Martha Stewart sponge in order to get rid of all those brush strokes. And it also covers better. As you can see, you can't see through the rock nearly as much just by using a sponge to fill in your area. So it does help with coverage and an even texture. So it's one thing that I really, really love about sponges. Now, if you can't afford these sponges because they are kind of pricey, um, you can also look for CraftSmart, which they're wooden handled and uh, mine are like so mucky and yucky looking now, but they work. They do the same thing and they're a little bit less expensive. I believe they're from CraftSmart and I got mine at Michael's in Canada. So now I'm using Fire Coral and I'm just kind of going in with smaller petals over top of those other ones. You might need to do more than one coat. Uh, but keep a sponge handy because that does help you a lot with coverage, like I said. So if you don't have CraftSmart sponges or Martha Stewart sponges, you can always go buy a sponge from the dollar store and cut it to your liking and do it that way. Spon any sponge will work. Um, and uh, yeah, patience. If anyone has 
tried out sponges after watching my tutorials. I would love to hear your experience with it. Let me know if it's helped you. Let me know if you're still working on it, if blending is still something that you're intimidated by, or if you're not ready for sponges. I want to hear all about it, I, but I especially want to hear uh, the positive things that have happened once you started using the sponges because it really helped me um, change the way I paint and it made just the experience of painting a whole lot more fun. And uh, I've been able to do so many different things because I I started using sponges and, and blending brushes and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people are uncomfortable with acrylic paint because it dries so quickly and it's so hard to blend when it dries so quickly. Um, but it's all about uh, what you use, especially and uh, going quickly. <laughs> Definitely working at it quickly. Uh, but I love sponges. I cannot d recommend anything more. If you're working on rocks and you're painting or, or anything, if you're painting anything at all, uh, definitely get yourself some sponges and try them out because they're awesome. So I am, I don't know why this paused and I'm not even doing anything, but I'm honestly thinking about doing stuff. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that's all my editing magic. That's what that is. <laughs> so I have got all of my petals on there, the fire coral and the magenta, and I'm just finding a black circle again. It's definitely not perfect. Um, I'm sure you can see that, uh, but basically I just want to kind of find a somewhat of a circle and then we can start dotting our mandala afterwards. So I am going to let that dry first before we even go near it. And we are going to do like the uh, stem and a leaf as well. But first I'm going to outline all my petals and you can go in if your black paint is too thick in some areas, let it dry, make sure it's really dry. And then you can go in and use the fire coral and the magenta to thin out the black lines a little bit, but always wait till it's dry or you're just going to get frustrated and you're going to want to give up, <laughs> but never give up. This is too much fun to give up on. And, uh, yeah, if you've tried out my fine lining brush, it will definitely be helpful when you're outlining all of these little petals. You can see my fingerprints on my rock. Those are going to disappear. Uh, it's just the kind of rock. It's very porous and it sucks up your, your oils on your hands. And uh, so if you can see little blotches here and there on the stone, that will not be affected. Um, once I seal it, you aren't going to see any of that. But if you're not sealing your rock, you're going to want to take some nail polish remover or even rubbing alcohol and a uh, cotton swab or q-tip and uh, dip it in the nail polish remover and that will take the fingerprints right off of your stone. Just be careful not to touch any paint because it will also take some paint off of your stone. But that's just a little trick. Uh, if you don't like the look of the fingerprints or you're concerned about it, uh, you can easily get rid of them with nail polish remover or rubbing alcohol. Um, I find nail polish remover works really very quickly and it dries really quick and then I can go right back to work because I'm just too darn impatient. <laughs> I get impatient when I am creating. Very impatient. So uh, as you can see, I'm only doing one leaf there, but I'm going to lighten it a little bit. I used a sponge to uh, even out the texture and I'm going to use the same sponge with a lighter green just to lighten some of the areas. I'm not going to go all the way out to the edge, um, but I just want to lighten some areas. I will probably be putting some glitter on that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to keep it really simple and it's going to end up looking just gorgeous anyway. Adding a little bit of light down the stem and then blending it in with a smaller blending, uh, or sorry, sponge. Um, the nice thing about these Martha Stewart sponges is that they do come in a variety of different sizes. So a tiny space like the, the petals, uh, those little sponges come in really handy and the, the stem as well is, is not very big. So you got to have a small sponge to get in those little areas. 
So now I'm going to be using dotting tools. You don't have to use dotting tools. You can use toothpicks and you can use the opposite end of your paintbrush as well. I'll be using a variety of different colors. This is more of a bright green um, and I will list all the paint colors in the description um, or most of them I will be showing you here as well. So I started with bright green and now I'm going to a sand bucket green from Martha Stewart. Um, I really like some of the colors that she has in her paint line. They're, they're, they're gorgeous. So when they're on sale, I try and get some of them. And I literally did one big dot in the very center. And as you can see, it's not perfect. So like they're not, they're not all perfectly lined up. I'm not using any kind of stencil or template. I'm going in it just barehanded, okay? Bareback <laughs> with my dotting tool. And uh, I'm using that same sand bucket green and I'm doing bigger dots around the other dots in between them now I'm switching over to aqua and I'm just adding a little bit of aqua to my sand bucket green and I'm just gonna gradually change this color as we go through the the mandala on the flower now it looks kind of white but it really is like a light, almost like a mint green. And then I'm adding color to that mint green, which is changing it to this next color, which is a little bit of aqua added to mint green. So with the lighting, it does look kind of like white and then blue, but hopefully you understand what I'm doing. I'm just kind of gradually changing the colors and the dots are not all perfect and they're not all the exact same size and that's not something that you should be worrying about right now because this is just about decorating the center of our flower and changing the colors and you aren't going to be perfect at it until you've done this a few times so this is just your first time doing this so as you can see there's a nice gradual color change i'm trying to keep my dots somewhat the same size throughout um, but I guarantee you there is no perfection in this. So now I'm going to add a little bit of a darker to, to this whole mess that I'm making here. So it's going to be Craft Smart Teal that I'm adding to this mixture that we've been working with all along. And that is simply just to uh, darken it up again and keep that color graduating onto the next shade. And we're going to change it up very soon. We're not just going to use blue in the center of this awesome flower. We're going to add some brightness. You can see that my black circle is not really a circle any longer. And it's still going to look really, really nice when we're done anyway. So now I'm using straight teal. Uh, that teal that I did mix earlier. I'm just going straight from the bottle now to get this nice dark teal finish off our blue section it's looking pretty nice those dots are very wet so you want to be careful you don't drag your sleeve across the top and ruin them all because that would be starting over <laughs> and you don't want to do that so be very very careful when your dots are still very wet now I'm using a Martha Stewart color it's a neon magenta and I know it's quite different from that blue that we were doing, but this is just going to brighten it. We're going to add some bright green and you're going to love this very, very soon. I'm trying to keep um, all the dots the same size again, but as you can see, they're not going to be. It's not going to be perfect, but close enough. And know who's going to go up to it and be like, oh, that dot's just way too small. <laughs> if they are, they should not be looking at your artwork, as far as I'm concerned. Now I'm going in with some white, and I'm using a smaller dotting tool, not such a big one. And I'm going to walk the dots around those bright neon magenta. And as you walk the dots around, they do get smaller as you run out of paint. So I'm trying to make sure that they're fairly symmetrical and uh, I'm trying not to trail off too far off to one side or and I just want, want them all to look fairly similar, but not perfect. 
And this is going to be all framed off with some gold and black as well. You know I'm going to add gold to this. <laughs> gold is one of my favorite colors. And uh, a lot of you have told me that you didn't like gold very much, but then you met me. <laughs> you met Rachel's Rocks Canada. And now you use gold more, more than what you used to. So I'm proud of that. That makes me happy. <laughs> probably makes paint stores happy as well. So I am finishing off that one and we're going to add some bright green, lime green, nice dot in between, try and make them all the same size. I want to thank you guys for subscribing. Make sure you share the video too because you never know who might want to try this on their own as well. Um, the rock painting community is growing and will continue to grow. Um, there's so many people out there that have this hidden artistic ability that they didn't even know about. And I'm going to bring it out of you. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. So I added a bright green center dot as well. But now I'm going to add some neon pink. With is also Martha Stewart. See how we're just brightening this all up? It changes the whole look of it. Every dot you add, every dot on top of a dot you add, changes everything. Now I'm adding a little bit of yellow, two little dots in between these blue ones. They're not perfect but I can see them and see how much just those yellow dots change everything. If you kind of step back and look at it, it changes so much. Going in with some light purple or lavender, two dots in between. Some of them are close together. Some of them are far apart based on the shape of my circle, <laughs> not circle. Still looks nice. Wait till you see all these dots covered in resin because it just magnifies everything. So I'm just making sure that my purple dots are fairly close to being the same size. Look at that. It's beautiful. Adding a little bit of light blue to these dots. You can add whatever layers you want on top of whatever you want. It really is up to you how far you want to go, how busy you want to get with it, um, but it changes. Every single dot changes everything. So I'm using some shell powder or nail glitter. You can use eyeshadow. Um, I'm just putting it on the stem and on the leaf, and then I'm going to use some triple thick clear coat to cover that up and keep the glitter in place when I'm done with glitter. I'm also putting a little bit of glitter just on the fire coral uh, petals. So they're going to shimmer and shine just a little bit. You can't really see it right now, but when you turn the rock, you'll be able to see that. And I'm only going to do it to the fire coral ones. I'm just going to leave the magenta ones alone and sparkle up the top layer of petals. You'll be able to see that glitter a whole lot better as well once it's been sealed. I honestly wish that you guys could see the glitter on these coral petals because it's so beautiful. Um, hopefully you will be able to see it a little bit better once I have sealed it with resin. Um, I will be going in with some triple thick clear varnish or clear glaze. Uh, you can use Mod Podge. You can use clear glue even if you want to. Uh, anything that is a clear varnish or clear glaze so that you can cover up all the glitter uh, so that it doesn't get into mischief and go in places that you didn't want it to. <laughs> so yeah, this is just to keep it all in place and then I'll let it dry really well. Especially let your dots dry really well because some of them are very thick and they may take longer than what your normal paintings take uh, to dry. So make sure you let them uh, adequately dry before you try to seal them with anything because you might end up getting... Uh, flaws in the surface of your resin or your sealer um, just because your paint wasn't quite dry yet. 
So keep that in mind. So I've also covered my stem and my leaf because of the glitter that I added there. Uh, and I will be going in with some gold because I don't see any gold here yet. <laughs> so I need to add some. So I'm going to get my spun, spun gold, my handy dandy gold paint. And I'm just going around with my dotting tool, making little dots just all the way around to kind of frame off the center um, mandala area. And then I'm also going to be going around with a second row of black dots. And it really does kind of bring everything together. It doesn't look so lopsided. My circle doesn't look... Uh, really off kilter. <laughs> so this kind of just sums it all up. Ice, ice is the cake. There you go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish all of that. I'm also going to outline my stem and my leaf with black paint, and I'm also going to put my signature on it. But I just wanted to share with you guys something real quick while I'm doing that. You can watch me paint while I blab for a moment. Um, it's good news. I just wanted to tell you something that I have been working really hard towards, um, and that is a thousand sales in my Etsy shop online. I am just so excited. This is something that I have been um, working towards and looking forward to and dreaming about since before I even opened my Etsy shop. I saw other artists on there, and I was just so like excited that I could be there. That could be me with over a thousand sales. That could be me with a whole bunch of excellent five-star reviews. That could be me. And if that can be me, that can be you. So I just want you guys to know that my compliment, my, my compliments, <laughs> my accomplishments are due to a lot of hard work, but a lot of awesome support from all of you. I would not be here if it weren't for you. And it's given me the courage and the the determination and the pride to keep going and keep painting and keep creating for you guys. So thank you for being there. Thank you for your support. I love you guys. So I just wanted to share that really cool, awesome thing that's happened to me. You get to admire this beauty as it's been resin now. For your pleasure, it is gorgeous. Look at the glitter, look at the shine, and all the colors, they really popped out. Same with the background of that beautiful Lake Superior stone. I love you guys. I hope you loved it. Keep painting.